Hello everyone, it's Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. I am here today with another farmhouse home decor DIY video for you. As you could see in the thumbnail, the theme of today's projects are paint sticks. These are four awesome farmhouse DIYs for spring, for outside, for in your home that you can make using the five gallon and one gallon paint sticks. I purchased mine at Lowe's. 98 cents for three of the larger ones or 10 of the smaller ones. So I really hope you guys enjoy these projects. Please let me know in the comments which of the four was your favorite. And also make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Welcome if you are new to my channel. Again, my name is Cindy. My channel is called Monarch Mom DIY. If you're wondering what the Monarch part is, stay tuned for the spring. You'll see why I named my channel that. Before we get started with today's DIYs, I wanted to share a company with you that I was recently introduced to. Thread Tank reached out to me to see if I would like to try a few of their shirts and review them for you on my channel. So today I'm wearing the first one. This is called the Slouchy Sweatshirt Style. You can get them in different colors, different designs. But my shirt I chose to wear today says Grace Wins. Just coming out of Easter, I thought this was a great first shirt to share with you. So, a little bit about Thread Tank. Their motto is stories that you can wear. So there's all different kinds of shirts. Sports shirts, religious shirts, um, anything really that you can think of. Just, uh, I think they even have some coronavirus shirts, I don't know. But check out the link that's in the description box. That's for this shirt, but then you can see everything else that's available. Also, Thread Tank has put together for you, my subscribers and viewers, a discount code that is good through the end of August. So look for that discount code also in the description box. And if you're interested, use that when you place your order and get a nice little percentage off. So back to our DIY. I'm very excited to share these projects with you. If you don't have paint sticks or can't get them, not a big deal. You could take these same ideas and use the giant craft sticks from Walmart. You could use regular size craft sticks. They were just really fun to make and I'm excited to use them outside on my patio and also inside my home this spring and summer. So with all that being said, We'll see you guys soon. For the first project, I'm using two packs of the large paint sticks and one pack of the smaller ones. I'm also using some floral, some floral moss, and this lid from a popcorn tin. So I made a larger ladder a few videos ago, and some of you wanted to see more how I put it together. So I decided to make a mini version, about half the size, and I'm gonna show you, try to show you in a little bit more detail what I do to put it together. So here I'm just opening the packages. My pack of 10 small ones, I did have those cut so that the indented part um, was not there. You could leave it on, your ladder would just be a little bit wider. So I'm going to use the wood glue and I'm going to glue three large paint sticks together, three large paint sticks together, and then five of the small ones and five of the small ones. So here I'm just showing you how I use my wood glue, smush them together, get them all lined up. I'm making sure that any writing um, on the sticks is going to be on the inside where there's glue. So there's three of my five gallon paint sticks. Just try to get them all as straight as possible. And I'm going to do this two times. So this will be the two sides of our ladder. And then five of the small craft sticks and five of the small, sorry, paint sticks. So this is what you're left with. Um, I will say that I let these sit for a while and I did put some heavy books on them so that they would um, not bow and they would dry completely flat. I'm going to go ahead and use truffle again to give my ladder just a dark, 
dark walnut color. Of course, you can paint yours whatever color you'd like based on where it's going to go. Um, you could make it a look more rustic with sandpaper, whatever you'd like. So this is how I'm gonna lay out my pieces. I'm taking wood glue again now and just putting some on the ends here. And really the hardest part of this project is waiting until the glue is completely dry. So again, I put this here, I let it sit well overnight until it was completely dried and those two those side pieces or those middle pieces were completely dried to the side pieces. And here's what it looks like by itself. You could throw a, a little hand towel over it in the bathroom. But what I decided to do is I wanted to make a wreath. However, because I'm trying to use my stash and not purchase anything right now, I found this lid from a holiday popcorn tin and I thought to myself, I can make a wreath out of that. So I cut out the plastic center and I was just left with this metal ring reusing some of my Dollar Tree reindeer moss from a previous project. I am just putting hot glue and then sticking down some of the reindeer moss. After it dries a little bit, um, I go around and you know pick off any that's, that's not really attached, that's just kind of hanging. And so this is what it looks like when I do the front and then I went around again to do the sides. I'm trying to cover all of the metal with this reindeer moss. Now you could stop here if you just wanted a very um, neutral looking green mossy wreath. I decided I wanted to use some of these Japanese cherry blossoms that I also had in my stash from something I made last year. I'm trying to give new life to some of my older projects. So I kind of cut this apart a little bit and you'll see here I'm just um, arranging them on the front of the wreath and once I have them all arranged how I like them I just use a little bit of hot glue on each piece and get everything stuck down. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing here, just putting a couple dots of hot glue wherever there's like a little stem and sticking everything down to my wreath. Of course, you can tie your wreath onto your ladder with uh, jute twine, anything that you have on hand. I decided I wanted to use some of this black and white gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby. The hardest part here is just trying to get the knot where the wreath is not hanging down too far. So I had to tie the knot a couple times, but I really liked how it turned out. And here is finished project number one made with paint sticks. Two large packs and one small pack. All right, for our next project, I'm going to use, I believe it was seven packages of the small paint stir sticks. I showed you twine here, but I'm actually gonna use nautical rope. I'm gonna first take 12 of the paint sticks. I could use this tray for the bottom part of what I'm going to make, but in case you don't have that, I'm gonna show you what to do with just the paint sticks. So 12 across, and then I'm going to glue these other two um, across to hold them together. I'm showing you how I'm going to make the edge as well. These two steps you would not have to do if you used a tray like the one I previously showed you. So let's get on with our 12 and then we're gonna take one paint stick and hot glue it and lay that across the other 12. And we'll do this on both sides. This will end up being the bottom of our 
bird feeder that we're going to make. This idea originally, um, I found it, it was made using craft sticks. So it was cute and everything, but only like, you know, five inches cube. Um, so I wanted to make a bigger version using these paint sticks. So there's the base of our bird feeder, okay? Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take two paint sticks and glue them together on the sides. You do wanna probably use a glue gun that has a pretty fine tip. Just glue those together and kind of squish them the best you can, make sure they're flat. And then you're going to take a third one and glue it like that. So one on the bottom and then the two are going to go up from the base of the bird feeder. So just like that. All right, and you're actually going to make three of these. One will go on each of the long sides, one will go along the back, and then we're gonna do something a little bit different on the front. Now, if I did this again, I would make sure that in rather than being in the middle of the side, it would be slid all the way to the front. And you'll see why when we try to put the one on the back. So here we go, this is number two. We're putting two paint sticks together and then we'll add the one that will be the base. Again, just putting hot glue along the side edge and then gluing it standing up there. Try to get as close to a 90 degree angle as you can. And then this one will go on the other side. Again, I would slide it all the way towards what the front of the bird feeder would be, but it's not a huge deal. It still works out just fine. So one on each side, we're gonna make one more that is going to be the back. Here it is. Oh, I'm sorry, you're not putting the base on this one. You're just doing the two together. Yes, that's right, because otherwise it wouldn't fit. And you're just going to put the two going up and then secure it also at the corners there. On the front, you're just going to do one, just so it's a little bit narrower, so birds can get in and out. Sorry for my shoulder. It wouldn't be one of my videos if you didn't see my shoulder at least once. I'm just making sure that those corners are sealed with the hot glue. All right, and then this one, again, putting hot glue on the edge, and then we're gonna glue that in. Also put some on the ends to seal up the corner. So it, you, what you've made here is basically a tray with two paint sticks on the sides and the back and one on the front. So now we're going to make four corner pieces. So like we just did with two sticks and one, we're just gonna put one stick on each side of the corner and these are gonna be kind of our walls, our corner braces for our bird feeder. So we've got four of those now. And just putting some hot glue on the bottom, we're going to attach those to the outside of each corner of our tray, just kind of pushing it in to make sure that they're all secured. So here's what your bird feeder project looks like with the four corners attached. Okay, so now we're gonna take, <laughs> I'm trying to show you the inside here. All right, we're gonna take four more of these and we're going to basically attach the top of our sides here. So one, at the top of each side. And I will say, even though you only see me doing one on each side, I am gonna go back and add another one all the way around. So here where you see me putting one, I actually glue another one right on top of it just to make it a little thicker 
and more sturdy. I don't want this thing falling apart when I put bird seed in it and a couple of birds are in there trying to get some bird food. So here's what it looks like now with the top done. So basically we have the cube part of our bird feeder. Here's looking from the top down to the inside where the bird seed will go. Now we're going to make the two pieces for our roof. And I believe I did 12 again, just like on the base, and then glued these brace pieces. I did them a little closer to the end. I, I would say I only have them in about a half an inch maybe from each end of my stick. So you're going to make two of those. And then putting some hot glue right here on the inside edge piece. Gonna balance that there and I'm gonna kind of just hold it while I put glue for the other one. This was the trickiest part with only having two hands, but I think it worked out just fine. You just kind of have to eyeball where they come together there at the top and hold them there until the hot glue is dry. I did put a bead of hot glue down the center to make sure they stay attached. Then to give them even more stability at the top, I'm going to do another piece going the length on each side of the peak of the roof and then another one right down the center at the very top. I am gonna have a piece of rope in here to hang this either on a tree branch or if you have one of those um, I don't know, I call them shepherd's hooks. You poke them in the ground and they have a little hook for hanging something on. So I wanted to make sure the top here was nice and strong to hold the rope. So that is pretty much it. I left mine the plain color. Um, of course you could paint it if you'd like. And then I wanted to show you how big this thing was. You know these paint sticks are 12 inches long. That's my hand on one side of the roof. So I really love how this bird feeder turned out. I can't wait to hang it outside. All right, project number three, more one gallon paint sticks. I believe I used 16 for this project. Some, I show rope here, but I used jute twine. And I'm gonna first take 16 of these paint sticks. I'm going to do kind of like a gray wash. I'm gonna use some of my mineral and I'm going to, I used way too much water for one, but I wanted to just kind of give this a gray stain look. So I'm using this paint and I'm just gonna wipe it on and then with a paper towel, um, wipe off some of the excess water. So you'll do this to all 16. You actually don't need to do it to two of them because you're not gonna see those pieces, but at least 14 of these paint sticks, you're going to want to paint whatever color you'd like or leave them plain, the natural uh, wood color, if that's what you would prefer. All right, so here's my sticks. Now these two, I'm gonna show you how I'm going to cut some pieces because these are going to be glued to the back um, to hold our little floral box, hanging flower box together. So I'm gonna cut there, there, and there. And so here's the pieces I made with my other two sticks. So I'm gluing five sticks together, doing that twice and then two sticks and doing that twice. So five, two, five, two, you can see there. So this will be on the inside. So as you can see, it doesn't matter that they're gray. I could have left them unpainted. Okay, so now we are going to glue our box together. I'm the the pieces that have five sticks are going to be the front and back 
of our flower box and then the two sticks will be on the side. So here I'm gluing these two as close to a 90 degree angle as I can. And then I'm going to, I believe I'm gonna glue the other two on the other side. Just a thin line of hot glue and then put the other two sticks attached there on the other side at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm going to glue that to my other set of five sticks. So I thought this was such a cute idea. Um, I probably am going to make a couple more of these and hang them um, in a group of three. You could, of course, use artificial flowers. Um, if you have some sort of water tube thing on the bottom, you could use um, live flowers. Of course, they wouldn't last as long, but here we're just gluing that last side on, and here's what it looks like with all of the pieces together. I did decide to take a couple scraps of paint sticks just to fill in the bottom here so nothing would fall through. Of course, this step is optional, just what I decided to do here, but I really love the gray wash. I noticed though that some of my edges that I had not originally painted were now visible, so I just went over them real quickly with some of my mineral paint, just real lightly blending that in. And the last step for this project is just to take a piece of jute twine or string. And you'll notice I left the little openings towards the top of my project. So you just um, string uh, through the hole and back out and then cut a knot and you'll be able to hang this wherever you'd like. And here's what it looks like. I just threw some artificial flowers in there, um, but you could even decorate it a little bit more on the outside if you prefer. Our last project, I'm going to use 32 more craft sticks. However, it's because I'm going to make two of these. So if you only wanna make one, basically we're making a mini palette. All right, so for each palette, you need 16 of the one gallon paint stir sticks. I decided to give these a wash with like um, my antique wax, Waverly um, wax, but I watered it down also because I wanted it to be pretty light. Of course, as with the other projects, if you want to keep it the uh, plain natural wood color, you can do that. But this is what I did and then I just made sure I got the front and the side edges. The back um, did not matter. So here's my two sets of 16 all stained and dried. So let me show you what we're going to do. First, you're going to take six of your paint sticks and you're gonna glue them unpainted side to unpainted side. So for each palette you're making, you're gonna do this three times. So this is where they're going to give some height to your palette. So there's one set, here's our second set, and then we'll just do one more. And then I'll show you how you're going to glue these to those three that you see laying horizontal. Now, one thing I would suggest you doing differently, those three that are horizontal that you can see the unfinished side, you wanna flip them over and be gluing these sets of two to the finished side because you will see this. And so I end up having to go back later and paint these unfinished sides because you can see them. But if you just remember to flip them over and glue these sets of two 
on top of the finished side of those three that are on the base. So here you can see what I'm doing, putting a line of hot glue, and like we've done before in this video, gluing the paint sticks then to be a 90 degree angle. One on each end, and then one here in the middle. So now to finish this off, you're just going to take your other seven. You'll see I'm lining them up at the top, middle, and bottom, and then equally spacing two more in between. So the last step of this is just to hot glue each of these top paint sticks, and this is what you end up with. I really love these, again, for putting air plants in or little succulents. And let me just show you again, all four of the projects. I'm super excited for these, all made using paint sticks. I really wanna know in the comments, you guys, which one was your favorite, what you think you will make, and thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see y'all soon.